Welcome to Workshop Topics. This is a tumbler polisher part two. The first test run to see if it does what I need it to do. And so far the test is encouraging. These are a couple of coins that I copper plated in an experiment a few weeks back and as you can see the copper coating is definitely being disrupted by the polisher. For this first test I thought I would use the media that came with the unit, a lot of very small steel balls. This was after a couple of hours in the polisher so I put them back in for a further two hours and something slightly different happened on the second run. So far this tumbler polisher is performing quite well and to be honest I am surprised. What is interesting is the plastic drum didn't shatter and it's now covered very evenly on the internal surface with a fine coating of copper. After a further two hours of this punishment I stopped the machine to have a look at the coins. Here you can see the copper coating everywhere on the inside of the drum. I put my hand inside and finally found the parts I was looking for and here's the 50p coin. As an experiment when I plated these coins I put them in my pocket for a couple of weeks with the loose change to see if any of the copper came off and it didn't. It was only when I put them in the polisher that this started to happen. The copper is coming away from the coins in like a copper foil. To be honest though I didn't prepare these coins at all. I just took them out of my pocket, attached a crocodile clip with a negative charge to them and although I kept taking them out of the electrolyte to see what was happening and how they were going on, I left them in for a total of about three hours. And I also used various voltages and currents. I think I'll see what happens. I've put them back into the drum. I'm now closing the lid and I'm going to put it back onto the tumbler polisher for another couple of hours. Please don't miss the point on this one. I'm not trying to find out how quickly or slowly I can remove the copper plating. I'm testing the functionality of this tumbler. While the tumbler was rotating merrily on the table, I thought it was a good idea to open this package that's just arrived from Blackgate's Engineering. It's a bag full of various bits and pieces, including a taper reamer. Here it is, it's a 16th taper reamer, very small indeed. Why have I bought this? Is it just to support my taper reamer habit? Uh, no. I need to pin the drop arms on the shaft of the triple expansion engine, so I'm going to have a practice with this very small reamer using a piece of scrap metal first. But for now, I'll put it back in the box. I was quite surprised when I was doing this because the point of the reamer came through the plastic box and stuck in my hand. I'm about to show the horrific wound, so if you're squeamish, look away now. I've never had any dealings with such a vicious taper reamer before. It's the middle of the day, I have blood coming out of my hand, and being type 2 diabetic, I thought, what a perfect opportunity to test my blood sugar. This is what I use, an AccuCheck mobile that's very convenient because it takes cassettes. This machine is really good, it's quick and easy to use, and when it analyses the blood it gives me a reading of 5.5, and that is actually a very satisfactory reading. What is really annoying, I use this meter and no medication whatsoever to manage my diabetes, and I was prescribed the cassettes, which are about £30 each. But unfortunately, since my doctor has prescribed metformin, it will not give me the cassettes for this machine, so I have to buy them, which is a bit of a pain and very annoying. While I've been showing you this test and talking about it, the tumbler has been tumbling away quite happily for a while. This is a piece of 132nd gasket material that came in the package from Blackgate's Engineering, along with these pieces of 1 16th of an inch diameter silver steel and stainless steel. And here is a pack of 1 16th by 3 quarters of an inch long taper pins. The package also contains some 4BA and 6BA Allen cap head screws. Leaving the tumbler on the table still tumbling, I went up to the workshop and tipped the screws into a couple of boxes. I didn't separate them by length, I can see how long they are just by looking at them. I marked them 4BA Allen bolts and 6BA Allen bolts as you can see here. I also bought some drills and a 5.32 of an inch diameter end mill the one that I should have used for milling the slots in the slide valve for the triple expansion engine. I'm just checking the thickness of the gasket, this is 1 32nd of an inch, and I'm thinking it's probably thicker than the stuff I already use. And indeed it is, this stuff is a lot thinner. I get these gasket offcuts from a friend of mine who has a gasket manufacturing company. 
Now I'm back in the house and the tumbling is still going on. The speed control knob on the tumbler is set to 2 and I've also engaged the auto reverse facility. I'm only really doing that to put some pressure on the belt because I don't think the drive belt is going to be up to the job. All good things must come to an end and very soon the job was complete. The 50 pence coin and the 10 pence coin were now mainly silver coloured again. Yesterday I received a delivery of some wine and I was puzzled by this because I hadn't ordered any. The mystery was soon solved though when I received an email from one of my customers saying has the wine arrived? And my answer to that is yes thanks Mark it has and I look forward to sampling it. I removed all the steel balls and cleaned up the drum and now I'm going to use some of this stuff. It's made by a company called Lyman and it's normally used for cleaning gun cartridges. I'm going to see what it's like for cleaning my parts. I will rephrase that. I'm going to see what it's like for cleaning the brass parts that I need it to clean. I'm now going to put a collection of parts into the tumbler. These are a pair of exhaust pipes from my twin Victoria steam engine. And now one of a pair of blowdown valves from the 5 inch gauge simplex locomotive that I'm working on. And here are some very old and very tarnished safety valves. Followed by the siphon off the HB6 boiler and the corresponding union. This next part is something I made, it is the blast pipe from the simplex. In this clip there are three hydrostatic lubricators, one whistle and the handle from the hand pump of my Lion locomotive. All of these were put into the tumbler and here I'm closing the lid. The mechanism for closing the lid is really good and it doesn't leak. I'm contemplating which of these bottles of wine to open first. Life is full of such difficult decisions. Sometimes I'm so easily distracted I forgot to turn on the tumbler. But that was soon rectified and I turned on the switch. The main thing about this tumbler that I'm really pleased with is it isn't very noisy. Some of the vibrating tumblers can be very noisy indeed. So I'm quite glad that I bought this one and again it was very very cheap. I'm still not happy about the drive belt, I just don't like it. I'm going to try a pair of O-rings side by side and see how they work. But for the moment I'm going to leave it doing its stuff. And that concludes this video. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.